Calling all detectives. You can't always believe what you think you see. Not even when you think it's murder. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, has a kind of instinct for being where trouble happens. By the time the police got to Harry Shockey's Three Gables Bar, there was nobody in the place but me and a dead man. The body was that of Knife Camden. He'd never be missed. Lieutenant Dawson of Homicide came over to me. How did it happen, Jerry? I shrugged. I don't know, Dawson. I was at the other end of the bar. I heard the shot, saw a knife stagger away from the bar and fall. After that, the panic was on. The door opened, and Harry knew it. The D.A. came bustling in with Doc Russell Gilliland, the coroner. The D.A. gave me a savage look. Browning, you find too many bodies. Altogether too many. Gilliland nodded briefly at me, squatted down beside the body, opened his bag. After a brief examination, Gilliland rose. This man's dead. He chewed the stump of a cold cigar, eyed me with interest. Don't look at me, Doc. All I know is what I just told Dawson. I heard the shot. Don't know who did it or why. Gilliland shifted the cigar to the other side of his face. Saw the body fall, did you? Yes, Doc. He was at the bar. The D.A. came prowling over. What is the matter, Mr. Coroner? This man has been dead for six hours at least. So he couldn't have died as Browning described. Knew its face lit up. Browning, consider yourself under arrest. When a man was killed in a barroom brawl, I learned that he'd been dead at least six hours earlier. At the DA's insistence, Lieutenant Dawson took me down to headquarters. But I wasn't booked because Coroner Gilliland came in. Did preliminary autopsy on Camden's body. Slug and M matches rifling marks from gun we found on another body collected earlier today. Identified as Wally Armand. That's fine, Coroner. That clears you, Jerry. Thanks, Mr. Coroner. Gilliland clamped his teeth over his cigar. Don't mention it. Come on, Browning. Give you a ride home. I leaned back against the cushions. You're going to get into trouble for this, Doc. Gilliland stared straight ahead. Take my chances. Okay, but the DA will figure out that a man who's been shot in a gun battle with another hoodlum can't die someplace and six hours later walk into a bar to be shot again. Didn't say he was shot again. Fact is, only one slug in him. You mean to say that whole thing at Sharky's bar was an act? Somebody shut off a blank cartridge? That's ridiculous. Yeah, isn't it? Huh? Here we are. I got out of the car, looked around. We were in front of the morgue, where the coroner had his office and laboratory. Oh, so that's why you sprung me. Sure, need your help. Come on. This is the other body, Holy Armand. Know him? No. I bent over the body. That's a peculiar-looking bullet hole, Doc. Think so? Come over here. The body on the other slab was that of Knife Camden, the man I fought had died at the bar. Doc, this bullet hole looks just like the other one. Both are too big, even for a heavy revolver slug. Did you do a bad job of probing? The coroner turned to me. Ernie, that's why I need your help. Those bunnies came in like that, but I'm liable not to be believed. You see, I did know Wally Armand. He was my sister's husband. She's been dead a good many years. Doc, I don't get any of this. Well, there has been more than a fake shooting stage. These two men were shot, the bullets were removed, and the slugs I found inserted in the wounds. Then the gun planted on Armand. The gun is mine. Stolen from my desk today. I see. And the D.A. won't believe that your gun didn't kill those two men. Why should he? He'll learn that I knew and hated Armand. And discover that I can't account for my time earlier tonight. Yeah. And also that if you want to make a murder look like a dual killing, you can always get a body from the morgue. Doc, you're on a bad spot. Yeah. Unless you get me off it.
Harry Sharkey, owner of the bar, was indignant with me. Why do you want to bother me, Flint? All I know is my chance to give a bum name. Do you suppose I'd stand here if I know what was going on? Sure you would. For enough money. Knife's body couldn't be brought in, propped up at your bar without you spotting it instantly. Now, who paid off so that he could stage that act in your joint? Sharkey's mouth worked. Oh, David. You're going to protect me. It, it was Spud Evers. Spud Evers was a big-time gambler and numbers racketeer. I didn't waste any time going up against him. Instead, Tom, I hate to say this, you've been a tenant at the morgue for over ten years, but unless you talk fast, you're going to jail. Now, when did Knife Camden's body come into the morgue for the first time, and how did it get out of here? The old man didn't even try to lie. I owe Evers money. Had to do it. Knife came in first about four in the afternoon. Unidentified body killed on the waterfront. A loom from a pitcher and mentioned it to one of Spud Evers' boys. Two hours later, Spud himself showed up for a knife's body. Hey, hey, he had no choice. I went upstairs to the coroner's office. Doc, what has a gambler named Spud Evers got against you? That's it, eh? Nothing. Never heard of him. No, that's not possible. Spud Evers staged this whole thing, intimidated a morgue attendant, probably killed Wally Armand, switched bullets in two bodies, and bribed a saloon keeper to let him stage a phony murder. All this to get you. Don't tell me you don't know him, Doc. I don't know him. But, uh, could this have any connection with a narcotics theft trial at which I will be chief witness next week? That was it, of course. Four of Spud's gang were under indictment for systematic narcotics thefts from city hospitals. Gilliland was the state's chief witness. Discredited him and the gang went free. Spud Evers was arrested, admitted everything but murdering Wally Armand. When Spud learned that not only Armand was dead, but another minor thug as well, he got the idea of pinning Armand's death on the doctor and staged the elaborate act with the other body to make sure attention would be focused on the coroner. Well, the jury gave Spud Evers ten years. And we finally learned that Knife Camden and Wally Armand had really killed each other. Knife dying on the spot and getting taken to the morgue in the afternoon, while the other man staggered off to die in an alley about an hour later. Like I said, when it comes to trouble, nobody's immune. Not even a coroner who rarely sees a crook until after he's dead.